Well hello again and this particular video has been prompted by the fact that I went watch shopping last week and I came this close to buying a new watch and the watch I went I almost bought was was the blue faced York Master 40. Beautiful thing and I must say I came as I say very close to getting the credit card out and buying this particular watch. The problem was I sat there at the AD with a free cup of tea and whatever had that watch on my wrist and I just had this kind of moment of clarity where I thought this watch is costing me over £8,000 and I just couldn't accept that I just couldn't take that and say yep yeah, that's that's a great watch that's a great value I'll buy it because it just isn't £8,000 is not good value on any level I mean yes I've paid five or six thousand in the past for a similar watch like a sub and my Milgauss but I think they've just gone a bit too far now. I mean, 8,000 is just too damn much. That's more than I paid for my Daytona, for God's sake, which is a watch that's in great demand. So that kind of led me to think, well, have Rolex and, all, and the rest of the Swiss watch industry gone a bit too far? Have they kind of jumped the shark and put prices up far too much to the point that people like me, who are really enthusiasts, are saying enough is enough and we're not gonna buy anymore. And of course, this is at the same time as the Swiss watch industry right now is going through a really difficult patch due to all kinds of reasons uh, but their sales have gone down they're laying off people um, I believe brightening it for sale right now and a lot of the top management of the top companies are being chopped and changed because obviously they're in great difficulty and that's led me to make this particular video so let's get started and off we go Okay, let's just stop there because I've been watching these SIHH 2017 videos uh, for the last couple of weeks and we're now in the gap between SIHH, which is a kind of preliminary to Baal 2017 where all the new models have been released. And, and I was watching this and I just thought, oh God, not another £100,000 turbulon gold, this, that and the other. It's completely irrelevant to the real world. And I must say, I am getting bored with it. And what's interesting is, all these new models are coming out, these high-end models are coming out. And I can't help but think this is a case of um, Nero fiddling while Rome burns because the Swiss watch industry is not in a good place right now. And really, I'm not seeing anything in these uh, videos, in these new models from the major manufacturers to get them out of the hole they're in. And so before we continue, let's roll back a year or so and see how on earth the Swiss watch industry went from being so successful and so profitable to the hole they're in right now. And to do that, we need to look at, first of all, the exchange rates. So let me just uh, shut this down. We'll come out of that. And I shall show you a couple of charts. And here we have the exchange rate history from pounds to Swiss francs from 2008 to the present day. And it's not looking good for the British pound. Uh, no wonder Swiss watches are getting so expensive now because since 2008, uh, the value of the pound is pretty much what? Halved. And what we can see here is in 2008 to 9, we had a great drop. And that's not so much because the pound dropped, it's more the case of the Swiss franc went up against all currencies because it's seen as a safe haven in times of trouble. And it then leveled off for a while. And then in 2016, we've seen another big drop. And that's caused by, obviously, the Brexit um, issue. So before you start thinking, oh, that's just a local problem, it's just a British problem, let me bring up a similar chart from um, the USA. So we can look at uh, US dollars to Swiss francs. And again, it's not looking good, is it? I mean, look at that for fall. Now, we're looking at a long history here from uh, 1970 right through to the current day. And... Look at that fall. I mean, back in the day, in um, 1970, your dollar would buy you around 4.4 uh, Swiss francs. But now, it would only buy you, nurse damn it, one Swiss franc. So effectively, uh, that exchange rate difference has caused an increase in prices of Swiss products, what it should have done, by a factor of four over that time. And again, that explains why something like a Rolex watch is now so much more expensive than it used to be, even despite the fact that obviously it's now more of a luxury product rather than a tool product. And again, it's not just um, the US or, or, or Great Britain. What we've also got here is a chart for Hong Kong dollars, 
which is where a lot of the sales to China uh, go through. And here you can see from 2002, it's gone from about four to eight. So that's a halving of value of the Hong Kong dollar against the Swiss franc, which in turn would lead to, in theory, a doubling, a doubling of price. So all is not well with the Swiss watch industry, but it's not just because of currency conversions. I mean, the Swiss franc's been um, increasing in value comparative to everybody else for decades. No, there's also issues where it's um, a bit of an on goal. And here we have the latest news from the Swiss watch industry. And although they're trying to put a bit of a gloss on it, a bit of a, a sort of spin on it, uh, it's not looking good, is it really? I mean, look at those falls, January to uh, January 16 to December 16, the falls there are going on for 10% each, and that's after they've taken steps to try and improve matters. Um, so it's not looking good at the moment. And I think what we should do now is um, go back again and say, well, how on earth did they get to this particular position? And I think there are three reasons. First of all, of course, you've got that, that Swiss franc appreciation, which we've just seen. Second of all is with the explosion in Hong Kong and the Chinese market and the Far East in general, for the last 10 years, the Swiss watch industry could not believe their luck. They upped production and they increased prices year on year and year, and they felt it would never end. But uh, everything ends eventually. And what we've seen here is a kind of perfect storm of um, currency conversions going against Swiss franc. We've got anti-corruption moves in China, which has um, absolutely decimated their sales in China and Hong Kong. Whereas over in the US and Europe, after the 2008 financial crash, you would have thought sales of luxury goods would fall. But in fact, after a brief dip, they picked up again. And that was because basically we had free money. Um, interest rates were on the rock bottom, never seen it before, half percent, quarter percent. So we also had QE, which is pumping money into the economy. And a lot of that money ended up in assets, in boosting asset prices, whether that's uh, shares, gold, classic cars, classic bikes, and of course, watches. But of course, all good things come to an end. And even though interest rates are still on the floor, um, I think people have pushed their credit to the limit now and they're not about to spend even more money on debt than they don't have to. So basically, we've got all these different factors um, suppressing the sales of expensive Swiss watches. And one thing that doesn't help, of course, is that they're in the luxury market. So a typical industry would cut costs and cut prices um, to get back in the game. And a lot of Swiss have been cutting costs. They've been reducing their headcounts, they've been making people redundant and so on. But one thing they can't do is cut their prices because they've spent so long building up that brand image, that luxury image, that cutting prices would just destroy all that good work. And a lot of Swiss watch industry may be very conservative. The Swiss are not stupid, not at all. So they finally got going and they're responding in uh, two or three different ways, which I think is important for us to know about because it could affect the watch you buy in the next year or two. And the first thing they've done is they've started to substitute models um, from a more expensive to a cheaper model. And I can show you that by looking at Rolex. So let's just go and have a look at the Rolex Milgauss. Now the Milgauss has also been a bit of an oddball in the Rolex family, but nevertheless, I mean, I like it. I've got one just like this, I've got a Z Blue, and I love it, but it is an expensive watch for what you get. You get a simple three-hander, and when I bought mine, it was 5,500 pounds, and after the recent 11% price increase, it's now well over 6,000 pounds. And if you think about it, that's a hell of a lot of money for a simple steel cased three-hander. Because in comparison to say, an OP 39mm or even an Explorer 1, it's a very expensive watch. And I think sales weren't that good. But of course, rocks can't just say, oh, okay, we'll reduce the price because that again would destroy their brand image and also piss off a lot of people like me who have bought in the past. So instead what they've done is brought out a similar watch at a much lower price point and that watch is, and of course that watch is the new for 2016 Rolex Air King. Similar case, similar bracelet, uh, it's got the same anti-magnetic uh, Faraday cage inside and it's the same movement and yet it's about 20 odd percent cheaper than a Milgauss. So although they haven't uh, reduced the price of the Milgauss, what they've done has been quite clever and brought out this very similar model at a lower price point. And I expect that the um, sales of this will be much, much higher than that of a Milgauss. And the second option they can take is to give you more content for the same price. And we're seeing that now with watches being sold with one or two spare straps sort of built into the price. Or you're getting a deployment buckle rather than a simple pin buckle for the same price and so on. So that's something to watch out for where a watch has been slightly upgraded but the price has been kept the same. 
or a new watch is being launched which is very similar to an existing watch but at a much lower price point and that's what's happening right now and what I also expect to see is more limited editions and special editions uh, at a decent price to get you to spend your money I reckon even Rolex will come out with a special edition perhaps of the Sea Dweller and who knows what else and if they do, that will be a clear sign that the watch industry in Switzerland is responding to the problems they're facing right now. Whether that's enough, I don't know. But if I was a buyer at the moment, right now, this month, I would not buy a new watch. Because who knows what might happen in a month or two. You may find that there's a similar model being launched at a much cheaper price point than, than the one you had in mind. Oh, and by the way, I do recommend this um, YouTube channel, Watches TV. It's based in Switzerland, so the guys there have access to a lot of the factories, a lot of the key players in the watch industry. And as I say, I would say this channel, along with the Watch You Want Inc. channel, are the two that I find um, the most helpful, the most informative, and I do recommend both this one and the Watch You Want channel. And now we just have to wait until March uh, for the Basel 2017 fair, and we'll see if my predictions are gonna be correct. So thanks for watching and cheers.